The idea of the donut is a picture of 21st century prosperity. Imagine a donut, a kind with a hole in the middle. In that hole is a place where people are falling short on life's essentials. People don't have the food, healthcare, income, education, housing that every person needs to lead a life of dignity. So we want to get everybody out of the hole. But at the same time, we can't overshoot the outer ring of the donut because there we put so much pressure on this extraordinary living planet on which we utterly depend that we begin to cause climate breakdown. We acidify the oceans, a hole in the ozone layer. So we need to find a way of meeting the needs of all within the means of the planet. And it ends up looking like a donut. If you want to recycle this thing, so entering the circular economy pattern, before you enter the process, you have to decide which ones you are going to get back, to, to recuperate. Because the process that allows you to do so destroys the possibility of recycling other parts. In your donut economics model, is there still a place for permanent growth or do we need to rethink the way we develop? So GDP was invented in the 1930s, the measure of national income. And I think over the last 80 years, our economies have evolved to structurally expect, demand and depend upon unending GDP growth. In fact, today I think we have economies that need to grow, whether or not they make us thrive, whereas what we need is economies that make us thrive, whether or not they grow. I know that sounds like a little flip of words, but it's actually a profound shift in thinking. Growth for, for what purpose and at what cost? We have economies that demand to grow, particularly financially, I think. The heart, at the heart of the financial system is this drive for ever-rising dividend returns, which drives companies to have ever-rising market share, ever-growing sales and ever-growing uh, profits, which is partly often what drives labour out of their chains. They are trying to minimise their costs. This is not a model that's actually optimising social outcomes for all. If you're going to go for a proper basic income, universal, unconditional, then you're talking about 20 to 30 percent of GNP, and that would decimate the rest of the welfare state. And I argue that universal basic services is a better way to go forward, providing healthcare, education, and other things as a citizenship benefit. Let's create uh, good jobs and new jobs with new op opportunities. And then you can organize a just transition, you can educate people, you can organize vocational training for new jobs, uh, even better pay maybe. Jobs that are not uh, attacking their health and, and not create uh, illnesses like uh, dust lung uh, or silicos. Uh, let, let's talk about it, but assure people that we are fighting for them. Green growth, moving towards uh, renewables, electric cars, all that is perfectly compatible with, with, with the trade union movement operating within a market society. There's no reason why we shouldn't progress down that road.